guys, I want to talk to you for a little bit about the government and all the news media and all these different people uh, getting very scared and making it sound very terrible when citizens have a lot of weaponry and ammunition or a lot of ammunition stockpiled. Now, people often look at this in the wrong terms. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean. First of all, let me tell you, like I always tell you, the Constitution was written for the citizens of the United States. It was written to protect the citizens of the United States from the government. The Constitution wasn't written for the government to give us restrictions. It was written to keep us safe from an overreaching, overbearing, tyrannical government and Congress and president and all that. So who is the militia? We are the militia. The people of each state are the militia. We are the very ones that should have stockpiles of weapons and ammunition. Right now, we got an administration that is praising the people of Ukraine for taking up arms. Well, in the next sentence, talking about how he wants Congress to sign bills to restrict the rights of our freedoms with firearms here in our own country. Isn't that amazing how that works? One country is getting praised for taking up arms, the citizens, while at the same time wanting to take rights away from us. Let me tell you something. Restricting our firearms, what kind of rifles we can have, what size magazines we can have, how many rounds they hold, features of weapons that we can have. This is not to try to save anyone's life. This is for government's own self-serving aspirations. So that if it, if it ever came to the point where we needed to take up arms because of a tyrannical, overbearing, overreaching government, that we would have much more of a disadvantage you see, tyranny wants full control. Corruption wants full control of everything and all the people. And you can only get full control if they are unarmed. That is, the, that is the surest way to get full control of the people is to take away their means to defend themselves. Now, people don't think about this, but the ATF, which has turned into a bureaucratic... Um, extension of one of the parties and is trying to create and make their own laws and restrict us from things was only put in place to oversee um, interstate transactions with firearms. The ATF is not supposed to be um, looking in each state. They are only dealing with uh, interstate commerce of firearms. But now somehow we've gotten to a point where the ATF is actually making law. This is supposed to go through Congress first, and then the ATF makes the law. Think about this. The news media will report that a guy who has, let's say, 20 to 30 guns and a few thousand rounds of ammo, they'll say this on the news like it's the scariest, freakiest thing they ever heard. But think about this. The ATF, who does not hunt, who is not using the... Uh, hollow point ammo for target and who is not sports shooting has millions of rounds hundreds of thousands of automatic weapons all stockpiled that could never be used in a foreign country they would only be used here against citizens of this country and nobody bats an eye they don't bat an eye that's fine right a rogue government agency now has Millions of rounds of ammunition, hundreds of thousands of weapons, even automatic weapons, and several other different things at their disposal that citizens can't get. And it could only ever be used inside of this country. The ATF never crosses into another country to use their weaponry or their ammo. Think about that. You know, the media makes it sound so scary and people that know nothing about guns, they want to twist everything they can and make it sound bad. Not everybody has a lot of guns and I'm going to talk about that in a minute and that's fine. But if you think about it this way, if a guy had 10 guns, that would not really be a lot if you think of it like this. A couple 22s, 
for his uh, kids to target shoot with or to hunt squirrel. Shotgun or two for deer hunting. Um, a rifle for hunting other game. A handgun for self-defense. Another handgun for home defense. See how this can start adding up and adding up and adding up? Maybe a uh, an AR-15 for self-defense or for sport shooting. See how that can add up so quickly? And when, when, when you look at it like that, it really doesn't look like it's that big of a deal. We have people that collect everything from coins to stamps to you name it. There's somebody out there that collect it. People collect shot glasses. They collect playing cards. Uh, they collect, there's people that collect old pop bottles. So people that collect firearms and ammunition, they're always looked at like they're crazy. Now, tell me if I'm wrong. I've never known a man that can shoot more than one rifle at a time accurately. So if a citizen has 500 AR-15s or one, what is the difference? You could hold two and shoot two, right? But not accurately. I've never seen a man at any distance shoot two rifles at once accurately. So you can shoot one rifle at a time. Same thing with a handgun if you want to be accurate. So what would it matter if a man had a thousand AR-15s or one? But the news always wants to put this out there. They're all anti-gun. I don't. I can never figure this out. The establishment is so anti-gun that they want to make people look crazy. So now things are kind of changing in this country. They're starting to turn from calling everyone racist to calling everyone domestic terrorists. It won't be long before a person that collects guns, likes the shooting sport, and has an American flag is going to be looked at like a domestic terrorist. I believe that, unless we get control back. That's the way they want things in this country. You know, these stupid red flag laws that will be um, abused. See, that's why we can't give them, give them an inch, because they'll abuse it. They will use it against people where it's not supposed to be used, and they'll write it off as, well, we can do this. Now it's legal. That's why nobody went for the, um, if you're on a no-fly list, that you can't own a firearm. Because all they would have to do is put everybody on a no-fly list under some kind of a tyrannical situation and then say nobody can buy or own a firearm. And they would circumvent the Constitution. Look, the people of the United States, we are the militia. We are the ones that should have stockpiles of arms, ammunition, and gear, and body armor, and body plates. It is us that should have that. We shouldn't be looked at as crazy. What should be looked at as crazy is an overbearing, overreaching government agency that has millions of rounds that could only ever be used against the same citizens that put them in power and that pays their salary. Something else here that I needed to say, guys, that has to be said... And I wanted to mention this before I go. Almost forgot. I'm not downing anybody that doesn't own a ton of firearms. In fact, the majority of the people, um, especially if you have families and stuff, and with the way the inflation is skyrocketing and different things, cannot afford to have huge stashes of arms and ammunition. This is fine. You say, uh, what do I tell those people? Here is what I would tell those people. First and foremost, you want to get yourself a good handgun. And a handgun that can hold uh, 12 or more rounds would be very nice. Um, now, I do carry some firearms that have less than 12. But the reason that I would tell you that if you only can have afford one firearm, get one that holds at least 12 to whatever number that you can conceal however many rounds you can have in that gun and that you like and you can conceal is because you will also be using that weapon as a home defense weapon. But there is several firearms that I carry that do not carry 12 or do not hold 12. Uh, so I would say get a hand, if you can only get one handgun, you have nothing. Or if you just want, if you don't have a handgun, get something that carries at least 12. Uh, best case scenario is you have a handgun, a shotgun, and an AR-15. AR-15, uh, good for home defense. It's excellent for home defense. Um, your wife can use it. The stock is adjustable for her, uh, for different people's reaches. It's low recoil. 
It holds a lot of rounds for if there is a multi multiple people in a home invasion. And get that. Get yourself to start with four magazines for the handguns and four magazines for the AR. And you know, if that's all you can afford. And get yourself whatever ammo you can afford. I really don't want to put a number on that. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. Get 250 rounds to start with if you can. Or just build it up. You know, if all you can afford is a handgun and a box of ammo, good hollow points do that. But like I said, I don't want to make it sound like that I think that everybody out there is going to be able to do this. Because the fact of the matter is, is most people... Um, most people with big families and things, they can't just go out and buy guns constantly. This stuff is expensive. But the good thing is, is it holds value. Another thing I wanted to mention is the, the media acts like people are crazy. That I remember them talking about somebody that had three firearms and they said that they had a stockpile of weapons for three firearms. I mean, I don't know where they're coming up. I don't know where they're coming up with this stuff at. There's guys all over this country that collect firearms and have large, very large collections of firearms and ammunition and different things. I mean, it would blow your mind if you knew um, how many guys uh, do that. But we are the very ones, if anybody, that should be doing that, the citizens. We employ the government from the president on down. We pay them. We put them there, and they serve at the pleasure of the people. We are the authority in this country. The government is supposed to be there to oversee foreign affairs and different things like that. The government is not there to mandate and rule over the citizens. The government is there to serve. Somehow this is getting twisted around in modern day times. But it was the American citizens when this country was founded that started this whole thing with the presidency and the Congress. It didn't start with the president and the Congress and then they ruled to the citizens. It started with the citizens that made how this would, how this would work by instituting a president and a Congress. We put them there. Our ancestors put them there to serve at the pleasure of us. We are the ones that are supposed to be in control. We are the ones that are supposed to have the weapons and the ammunition and the tools that we need to protect ourselves and our families, our communities, protect against an overbearing over a tyrannical government or administration if we ever, if it ever came to that. People will say, you're crazy you talk like that. Well, that's a thing. One time back in 1776, they didn't say they were so crazy at that time, did they? And you see, you see how it worked out to this day. All right, guys, now with that, this is DOF, and I'm out.